Okay, um, and now let's have a quick demo, and it will not take long. Uh, it will take much of your time. It might be interesting to see how easy it is to actually exploit, for example, in this case, a public FTP server. So, for the sake of making it a little shorter, we already know that this is an FTP server. We know the IP address here, and this is the FTP server logged into the FTP server. And this is my uh, Kali machine here. This is obviously a different machine, as you can see. And there we go, we start now. Uh, we start by starting the MF, MSF console, the Metasploit console. There we go. And then we check the database status. It's connected and it's good. Uh, so now next would be we will use the internal way of using Nmap out of Metasploit. Uh, so, since we already know the IP, we just use this IP that we already have, right? So, <laughs> just type it. One. And while this runs, so just understand, right? FTP servers, by the nature of what they do, is often still available even though there are many different servers nowadays and many different ways of sharing files, but there are still so many different uh, types of FTP servers publicly available on the internet, sometimes not secured, not SFTP, not FTPS, and many of the times unpatched. And an unpatched server like this is an immense risk and actually not very difficult to exploit, even with very limited knowledge. As you can see here, it's very simple to do this. So once we have received the return of the scan, which should be any moment now, there it is. So we see already that uh, there's lots of services running, FTP, NFS, login, exec, there's uh, HTTP running, telnet, SSH, we just focus on FTP. So what we do is, we use the search command within Metasploit to search for this particular service. Is there an available uh, exploit? There is, there's an excellent one as a matter of fact. So. Next thing we will do is, we already know the IP, we know the port because it's FTP, it's port 21. And let me just, just so we have it on the screen. And therefore we will set now the parameters. So we set the R hosts, which will be the IP of the target. There we go, we set the R port. In our case, this is 21. Then what we will do next is we select the exploit to use. We use the use command for that and then the exploit. It will it will default to interact in this case. Um, that's pretty much all we need to set to prepare for the attack. The next step is only the next simple logical step, which is to use the either run or exploit command within Metasploit. And it's now trying to exploit. Found shell, command shell session one opened. There you go, exploited. Don't believe it. Okay, we see here. We are in the root directory. That's what we see. It's not much to see. Uh, simple way to ls. Uh -huh, okay, it looks like we see the same. Let's touch a file here. Test. Let's see now on the exploited server. There you go. That's the file created by root. It means I have complete root access for this. I could do virtually anything. I could say user add test tech. Ah, cast. You will see the user edit here. Uh, uh, and you can see it was modified just now. Date. This is running on, as you can see, it's running on a different time zone, so that's why it's a different date. But as you can see, just modified, just create a user. Literally, you could now take over the entire machine. You can create users, you can install uh, persistence, 
persistent uh, forms of connecting to it again. You could do anything. And if you just, after destroying the system, you could just simply completely clean out the system now. And you could also just reboot it. As you can see, system is rebooting. And with this, I hope it's very clear that be very careful with what you expose to the internet. It's very easily compromised if you're not careful, if you're not patched, if you don't follow at least privilege approach, and if you're not really maintaining your identities in the way you should do that. Thanks for this, and that's the end of my short demo.